Hello, hello once again. Thank you for tuning in. And if it's the first time here, my name is Chandra, and I hope this message blesses you or somebody out there. And today's topic is the secrets of the spirit. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, which is Ephesians 6 12, which says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual hosts of wickedness in highly places. Meaning, as a child of God, when you become a child of God, you come to Christ. So it's no longer you who lives, it's Christ that lives in you. So therefore, he that is from above is higher than the spirit. So that's why God gives you the power and authority over the spirits. Because he doesn't have to show himself to the spirits because the spirits understand him and they know him but when it comes to flesh and blood you leave it to him that belongs to him that his own battles because you need to understand that Christ became flesh and he owns all flesh and those are his to deal with because you he gives you the prince the spiritual the the, the powers because it's the spirit that I give to you because when it comes to flesh flesh doesn't fear God people don't fear God flesh doesn't respect God and flesh in most cases offend God and whenever there's a battle and in order for victory to manifest God will fight those little people to show them who is the God in your life and you your job is to pray because he has given you the power and authority over the, the spirits. That's your battle. But those people, one day, for victory to show up, he will fight them and his glory will be shown through you to show who is the God of your life. Because in most cases, as children of God, when we come to Christ, God will consistently, completely, mold you into what he wants you to be and in, in, he, in his dream like in his mind he wants you to be like christ and he wants me to be transformed to be like christ what he has created you to be he wants you to, he wants christ to be so much in you that when he looks at you he can only see christ he can't even tell the difference between christ and you that's what he wants us to be like and because he wants us to be like that what he does, he takes us through the process. That's why in most cases, through that process, no matter how much it hurts, no matter how painful it is, we don't die through the process. Have you ever wondered, like, how come that sickness didn't kill me? How come I didn't die in the middle of the warfare? The reason why you didn't die is because God was sustaining you. He was sustaining you so that you can, you can learn about the spiritual realm because that's your final destiny because you start preparing for the spiritual realm the day that you were born because the spiritual realm it's a whole realm it's a whole world dimensions existence of different beings of manner and kinds evil spirits and mighty angels and we all need to know about the spiritual realm that's why we start preparing for the spiritual realm from the day we are born. Because this is where our final destiny is. That's why it's very important as a child of God to be on a mission to do your assignment here on, on earth. Do your assignment what God has sent you to do here on earth. So that by the time you enter the spiritual realm, you enter into God's bosom. You enter into God's rest. Rest in him. The world we live in is controlled by the spiritual realm. And it's your advantage to know what happens in the spiritual realm. So you can have an idea and understand everything the way it is. Because without understanding or knowledge, you wouldn't know why things are happening the way they're happening. Because sometimes things are twisted. They don't look the way they are. 
here on earth compared to the spirit realms. So sometimes in the spirit realm, you can be a princess, something of a bigger high ranking, but in here on earth, you look like a clown. And somebody here can be of influence, they look big, they're celebrities and people celebrate them. But when it comes to the spiritual realm, they're nothing. They're just naked. They're open. Because things are not how they always appear. They're always switched in the spirit realm. So that's why you need to understand how these things work. Even the Bible tells us in Proverbs 4, 7 that wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. But above all that getting, get understanding. You need to get understanding because with understanding, you'll be able to navigate this world according to God's will. You'll be able to understand how things work. And you need that spirit of revelation and understanding. And without that, you'll be doomed. Because Satan is always roaming around looking for whom to devour. And most of the people that he captures and he, he, he devours is people who don't know the truth, people who don't know the word of God, people who just go with the flow. They never ask why things are happening the way they're happening. They just go with the flow. They see a trend. They follow it. They hear people talking about what they're doing or what is trending, what everybody seems to think is working, and they do it. And those are the people that the enemy targets because they're followers. They don't know what they're doing. But the Bible tells us that God became flesh, just like us, through Jesus. And he understand men. And the one that is also after me is man. And challenge you, challenging you on the carnal level, no spiritual level. Because the spiritual level, you are above the principalities. You are above the power and all the works of the devil. They can't do anything. And the Bible also tells us in James 2.19 that you believe that there is one God. You do what? Even the demons believe and tremble. Meaning, Satan to fear God and trembles. Whenever he sees God, he can't stand before God. He believes in him and he trembles and he fears God. And he knows who God is. But when it comes to humans, they don't. They don't fear God. They don't respect God. They think they can do anything and get away with it. That's why in most cases, God doesn't allow you to fight with them. You can laugh and smile with them during the day. But you always have to remember in the spirit, you are enemies. It doesn't matter whether they're your siblings, they're your parents, they're your children. Because humans, they always think that they are smart. Because they have the wisdom of the world. Which to God, he see it as foolishness and craftiness. Because he knows that their thoughts, the thoughts of the wise of this world, is vain. And he always makes them to believe that they are destroying you and they are winning. While God is allowing it because he's taking you through a process of elevation. And when he's taking you through that process of elevation, because you've been put there and you've been highlighted, Sometimes he can even allow them to, to see your mistakes, to see your flaws. He can make them to laugh at you, to see your weaknesses, to reject you and knock mockery out of you. He can even make them to see that, oh, look, this is what she's doing wrong. This is her flaws because you are in the limelight and they can see you. Then one day, the same people that are enjoying the show, and they think that they're getting away with it. He will raise the standard and he will lift you up. And when he lifts you up, that's when his glory will be shown through you. Then they will understand who is the God in your life. Because remember, the Bible says, God uses the foolish things of this world to confirm the wise or to shame the wise. 
but he never uses foolish people or idiots. He uses people that are blind, that are happy to let them lead, to allow him to lead them so that they can become who he has designed them to be so that they can fulfill their purpose here on earth. Because flesh is limited to its capacity to reveal God. And God knows that. So he always looks for people that are genuine with open hearts, who the world might see as foolish. But God knows that those are wise people because he can easily use them to conform the wise. So I'm here to tell you, brothers and sisters, when you are in Christ, you are hidden in him. That means that you are hidden in two layers. So you are hidden in God and you are hidden in Christ. And the third layer is the Holy Spirit. So whatever happens to you, know that it happens because God has allowed it. And in most cases, he allows the Holy Spirit to take you through the process while the enemy thinks that they are winning, they are wise, they are smart, and they are doing whatever they want. But at the end of the day, he always raises the standard. And when he raises the standard, his glory is shown through you. His glory is shown through you to show that who is the God of her life. Just like Jesus. He wants us to be like Jesus. When, after, when Jesus was led into the wilderness, when he went there, he was led and he fasted for 40 days. And 40 nights. But the Bible tells us that when he came out of the wilderness, he came with power and authority. So that means that he was no longer led. And the, when you look at after look at the scriptures after he came from the wilderness, he was no longer saying, My father is leading me to do this. Whatever the father was doing, he will do it. So now he was in partnership with him. He was no longer led. They were working together side by side. And that's what God wants every one of us. He wants to be in a point where we can all come to a point. He wants us to come to a point where we can all walk and be in partnership with him. We walk side by side with him. He's no longer leading us and we are full of Jesus. We're full of the Holy Spirit. So now it's no longer us. As we've died to ourselves. So but it's Jesus that is in us. And that way he can tell us, do this, we can sit down, we can coach it, he can tell you that we can sit and discuss, because you're in partnership. You can tell him, like, God, why can't we do this this way? He explains to you, this is how I want it to be done, because now you are in that, you are in that realm with him, realm of trust, realm of understanding. He can trust you. He can even trust you with his power, because one thing that God doesn't want to do he wants to give his power to somebody who doesn't know that use to you who doesn't know how to use that power because that could be a danger to that person but in order for him to empower you the way he empowered Jesus Christ he wants you to come to that realm where you can have understanding where you can be in partnership and you can walk together Amos 3 3 can two walk together unless they agree I'm here to tell you brothers and sisters we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. That's the battle for God, not us. Us, he has given us the power and the authority. And our fight, it has to be with the spirits. The spirits know him. They understand him. He doesn't have to reveal himself to them. But when it comes to human beings, they don't fear him. They don't respect him. They offend him. Therefore, that's his battle to humble them. To show them who is the God in your life. To show them who is God. So that they can be put to shame. That's why he can, the Bible says, you prepare the table in front of your enemies. So when you prepare that table, they can see that after all, they were not that smart. They were not that wise. But you, who they thought you were foolishness of this world. You are the wise one. You are the smart one. You're the intelligent one because you have a beckoner of the Holy Spirit and the angels because he gives angels charge over you to the righteous. So you have those angels that are helping you with everything. 
that you do. They aid you, just like Jacob. When he, when he was in the house of Levin, the reason why he, can accum he could accumulate so much wealth is because he had assistance of angels. And you will have the same thing, assistance of angels. So I hope you've been blessed by this message. And if you have, please like, share, subscribe to my channel. And thank you, thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Amen.